Jobs, Skills, and Careers in Sustainable Resource Management. Well, you've learned a lot in this course about the general uh, status of sustainable resource management industry, and hopefully you've been paying attention to the different videos that you've seen so that you're able to pull out information to inform you about basic jobs, the types of skills, and the types of careers that are available in sustainable resource management, both in Illinois and anywhere you go in this nation. Entry-level skills. As with any job, you definitely want to make sure that your employer knows that you are reliable and punctual, see that you groom and dress appropriately, and that you are responsive to instruction and to training. In sustainable resource management, particularly in a processor setting, in the MRF, you must have the ability to lift safely and you must have the ability to understand and adhere to basic health and safety guidelines. You must be able to identify and accurately sort materials, including by type and by grade. You should also be able to effectively communicate both with your co-workers and with customers. This can provide a good public image of the company. If you are consistently performing at a high level at this basic entry-level job and exemplify these sorts of skills and accomplishments, especially providing the good public image of your company, you are likely to be promoted at some point into a mid-level or lead worker. Uh, perhaps then at this greater level of skill, you would utilize math skills for things like handling money and the metrics, the measurements reported in uh, program updates, status reports. You would need math skills to be able to ascertain material values. You definitely would need reading and language skills as well. You need to be able to write and interpret contracts, training manuals, and the regulations that govern this industry. You also need to be able to interpret uh, written instructions related to deconstruction and repair. These are a little higher level skills that might require more attention to detail and a little more delicate handling. Equipment operators need to be aware of lots of different safety mechanisms as well as have the operating skills to safely run things like a baler or crusher, a shredder, a washer, a conveyor belt, uh, a spreader, a separator, an optical sorter. Drivers or transportation workers are needed who know how to run uh, equipment like bobcats, an end loader, a track hoe, perhaps a box van or truck, an over-the-road semi, lift and load compactors, a scarab or a grapple. These again are specialized skills that not everyone has and not things that not everyone could do all day for their living. Verbal skills, oral communication skills are very important, especially regarding peer and employee relations. Customer relationships are super important no matter where you work in the sustainable resource management industry, as are supply chain relationships. Uh, direct operations and or indirect operations both provide jobs for the sustainable resource management industry. By this I mean if you're working in a material recovery facility, a MRF, or you are the sustainability coordinator for your business, even though your business is not um, a recycling processor, then you're directly related to the sustainable resource management industry. However, if you're a retail salesperson, in a general store setting, and a small portion of your job has to do with communicating the benefits of green products, then you're not directly related to sustainable resource management, but perhaps only indirectly related because you may supply things like recycling bins um, that support the sustainable resource management industry. So again, whether you're directly or indirectly related, um, these jobs are all a part of the sustainable resource management industry and a good thing to assess for the skills base needed to participate successfully. Indirect jobs also include those suppliers who provide the equipment that we just mentioned and or supplies, the commodities that we run through 
bailing tape and wire, office supplies, that sort of thing. And then repair and maintenance of that equipment in addition to selling it. Um, those would also be indirect jobs related to the sustainable resource management industry. Written skills, writing is a very important talent to have. The higher level you go um, in your career, Things like being able to create from scratch training and education materials or marketing pieces for your program or your company. Being able to clearly communicate in annual reports. Being able to be understood in terminology that's pertinent, relative, and um, understandable by your target audience for things like strategic planning. These all require good writing skills as well. So we've gone through entry-level skills and now some mid-level or lead worker or management type skills that you would need. Now to go beyond this, if you are the type that could potentially be an owner or director, you would need to embody or have all of the skills that we just mentioned. Plus, you would also need some high-end planning skills, finance skills, business model planning, human resources management and people skills, and even research ability, the ability to understand the laws and regulations that impact your business. You need to be able to follow those laws and regulations and train others on the same. And then in best management practices, hopefully if you're a leader, an owner or director in this industry, you are taking that one step further into community engagement and displaying the leadership skills that are so needed because we need folks in this industry to be involved in policy making, impact, uh, the impact of laws and regulations are understood by those at the highest echelons, the owners, the managers of sustainable resource management organizations and hopefully the leaders that display all of these different skills we've talked about will take the time and have the passion to become involved in setting policy or renewing or updating policy. There are many different sectors of course to our culture that you could work within. The government sector of course we've seen several different folks working both at the federal level, the state level and the local level and within government Programs um, are managed that both educate and incentivize for sustainable resource management, that enforce for sustainable resource management requirements or regulations, and that plan, implement programs, and monitor performance. So government has a lot of possibilities, although everyone knows that in this economy they've been very stretched with their budgets there still are some positions available and I don't discourage anyone from at least keeping their eyes and ears open and seeking that avenue to provide public service. The quasi-governmental or institutional sector includes organizations that fall under the military, health organizations, and education. Again, these folks lead by example, often are in a position both to educate as well as implement sustainable resource management programs that are significant within their own departments or agencies. Uh, nonprofits, a specialized sector within sustainable resource management. We've seen examples from the Habitat for Humanity Restore, from Goodwill Industries, and from Home Sweet Home, all of whom have found a niche in the material reuse sector, but some nonprofits still find uh, a niche within recycling as well. I believe Home Sweet Home actually does accept some materials and sell them and accept the materials for their programs. So recycling and reuse are both healthy and alive within the nonprofit sector and that would be a good place to look to. Of course the business sector and there are all different types of business. We've already mentioned those that are directly involved with sustainable resource management versus those who are indirectly involved Perhaps you work for a business already that is thinking about implementing sustainable resource management. I encourage you to think about this hard. Any job could potentially be a green job. And any job within any organization potentially could be involved in the sustainable resource management efforts of that organization if by chance you were able to volunteer or to serve on a green team 
or a sustainability committee for the organization. I firmly believe lasting change comes from within any agency or organization, so start where you are. Use what you've learned in this course and begin to implement sustainable resource management in your existing business. Um, business includes the manufacturing sector, the retail sector, the service sector, which includes high-end type services such as legal services, financial and banking and insurance services, but also includes specialized services that support industries such as the medical industry. There are suppliers and wholesalers and, of course, material brokers specifically related to the sustainable resource management industry. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to end up? There are some hard reports, some good studies out there, recent studies that give statistics that are encouraging both about green jobs in general and about green jobs within sustainable resource management industries. Things like the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity and Illinois Recycling Association's recent Recycling Economic Impact Study, the Illinois Department of Employment Security's recent report on green jobs with a whole chapter on sustainable resource management, waste reduction and recycling. The Blue Green Alliance recently came out with a report that touts the benefits of uh, blue collar jobs being connected with green jobs. Because again, just about any job can be a green job. And then the Urban Trash Report suggests that for the benefit of families and communities across the nation, communities must control and plan for uh, sustainable resource management so that we stop trashing our children's future and start recovering those resources for beneficial use in the economy, both for the benefit of the economy and for the benefit of our health and safety in the future. Any job can be green and in corporate America lately Corporate Sustainable Responsibility, CSR, has come un into more highlight, more of a focus. And so job titles like Environmental Health and Safety Coordinator, uh, Sustainability Manager, Innovation Director, or the Director of Efficiency or Operations and Facilities, um, all of those job titles often take under their purview some responsibility for sustainable resource management. Within the direct sustainable resource management industry, we have this little chart that shows, of course, still a huge amount of involvement and business related to the recovery and recycling of traditional materials such as glass, plastics, paper, metals. Lately, of course, composting has become a lot more popular. It's a lot more environmentally friendly than landfilling or incineration and certainly um, produces a beneficial product at the end. We have uh, now initiated seriously efforts to recover food scraps along with landscape waste and other organics for composting. E-scrap, electronic scrap, very important in recent years. Many states now, including Illinois, adopting bans of electronic, consumer electronic materials. So e-scrap has a lot of value, as does cons construction demolition debris. A construction demolition debris, both from new construction and from the demolishing of old structures and buildings, as well as recovery of building materials for reuse, and in fact recovery of lots of reusable materials for reuse or repurposing. And let us not forget the good old salvage industry, which has been around from just about day one, from the beginning of this country. Salvage industry generally is thought of as including metals and things like cars, automobiles, major chunks of metal, but they also handle materials like plastics that are difficult to recover in curbside programs. One of the new and upcomers would be anaerobic digestion, sort of a subset of composting, but kind of staking its own claim as the biogas industry. Anaerobic digestion is a form of composting, but within a controlled and no oxygen environment. It does produce usable compost, but also produces a lot of uh, methane to produce energy. That's an industry to keep your eye on that will definitely be growing in the next several years in sustainable resource management. And then we have a little sector here for future materials recovery we can't even predict or know about now. 
The market is constantly changing. Keep your eye on the materials. Keep your eye on the operations. What are we going to do in the future about nanotechnology and recovering those tiny machines and robots? That's a question yet to be answered, but I'm sure will be answered by the innovators and thinkers within the sustainable resource management industry. Now, at the end of this course and this certification, thinking about what to do with this new knowledge, I ask you to honestly assess where do you want to be? Do you want to work for government? Do you want to work for a nonprofit? Or do you need to be in the business sector? What are your interests? Assess it honestly and combine it with an assessment of your skills. Probably the most important tool is your personal network, your relationships, and beyond your own personal relationships, their contacts and friends may provide the answer for the next logical steps in your career. If you're seeking entry and have no contacts at all in the sustainable resource management industry, look around your community. Volunteer. There are always good events that go on that, that need good volunteer service organizations, sometimes local government, looking for volunteers to help staff events or provide education. Put your name out there and get known. That's one way to expand your network and get involved. Another way to volunteer is at your current workplace. Always be positive, never be negative when you're trying to educate folks and recruit them to participate in a recycling program. Don't thrash them verbally. Just set a good example by doing the right thing and sharing with people the opportunity for them to do the right thing too. Number one, your network is probably your most important tool. Number two, that employers are looking for definitely is experience. Number three, closely behind experience would be the training and education that you have. Of course, this coursework and others available online, other training and education available through groups like the Illinois Recycling Association, government offerings and workshops, nonprofit events, those are other ways to get the word out that you're seeking employment and wish to contribute sustain through sustainable resource management efforts. Do your research and homework. Expand your network. Expand your knowledge base. Figure out in your community who are the local players. Who are the biggest employers? Who might potential service providers be? Or who might the businesses or organizations be that would purchase services from those providers related to sustainable resource management? Who are the likely material producers? Who are the likely community leaders that would provide some guidance and or an opportunity for you to volunteer or a job for sustainable resource management? Here's the thing. Identify the need. Where there's a service void, there's a business opportunity. My advice always is find what needs to be done and do it, regardless of the pay or the job title. If you're out there with your name out and about and you're doing a good job and contributing and volunteering, putting your passion um, to work, then it's very likely someone's going to notice and maybe provide an opportunity for you. A door will open. Do you have the vision? the resources and the discipline that it takes to become an innovator or a, an entrepreneur in the sustainable resource management field. People like Buddy Gibson at Gibson's Recycling Depot up in British Columbia. Buddy couldn't find any good end markets for things like glass. His recycling depot is located on an island. Glass is very heavy to transport, takes up a lot of space, doesn't have a lot of value. But he refused to take no for an answer, and so Buddy developed a way to make glass floats for fishing nets out of post-consumer glass. Now, this is a saleable product that's directly related to his local market in his community. There are a lot of fishermen off the coast of Canada and British Columbia. He also refused to take no for an answer, figuring out that polystyrene eggshell cartons and meat trays didn't have a, a lucrative end market. He took those bought a condenser, and has now made plop pots, what he calls a plop pot, made out of melted condensed polystyrene. He makes things like this planter. And uh, so Buddy is an innovator and an entrepreneur. He stuck with it. He did the research. He refused to take no for an answer. He has invested a lot of his time and some money into finding an answer. So the question is, are you that kind of person too? You know, um, 
in sustainable resource management generally, there's a passion and a purpose within the people involved in this industry. Most of them know why they're doing this and how their job makes a difference as well as earns them a living. It's usually not just a job. There certainly is no lack of material, as we have learned in this course. There possibly might just be a lack of political will in your area or maybe just a lack of knowledge or organizational commitment. Maybe there's a lack of infrastructure or service providers. Whatever it is, that's something you need to figure out and identify and figure out where you fit in that picture. Any active participant in sustainable resource management is a part of the circular economy. A circular economy is one where sustainability and efficiency come to the forefront, where the end of one process becomes the beginning of another. It, it uses effectively virtually all materials and all energy, where waste no longer exists, where discards are assets to be managed, and those that are no longer recoverable are recognized as a design flaw somewhere within the material life or the life cycle or supply action chain. Being a conscious participant in that sustainable resource management action chain is the first step to being a sustainable resource manager, regardless of your job title. How and where do you fit in? Only you can answer that, and hopefully this course has helped you do just that.